welcome back i'm harish and in this channel i talk about various ways to build apps without writing code and uh, if you didn't notice or if you did notice i created a lot of content around uh, thunkable as a tool to build apps but i realized there is uh, no video that where i talk about what are the components or what are all the aspects or tools available in Thunkable that you can use to build apps and this is Thunkable 101 where I will show you what are all the available options for you to build apps in Thunkable so let's get started Thunkable is an extremely powerful tool to build uh, any type of apps web or mobile and uh, here are all the available components for us in Thunkable to be able to convert our ideas into apps that users can use right so let me just create a sample app and get started to show you what are all the components what are all the uh, user interface features available in Thunkable and we are going to use the drag and drop builder So whenever you create a project in Thunkable, this is the screen that you will see where there is a canvas, right? This is essentially where you will create the screens. You can add, always add multiple screens here by clicking here and then add a way to navigate from each of these screens, right? I've made a video on that. I've made a video on how do you can create apps using Thunkable. This video is not that, right? So this piece is where you create different screens right and where can you access all these screens on the left right you can always access all these screens you can delete these screens from the left right along with that thunkable has a lot of components now what are components components essentially are uh, uh, drag and drop features which let you build features on onto your app right now what are these features right some of the features that are available in thunkable are visible components which is what the user can see click and use right it can be a form where the user can input some information it can be a map where we show uh, a google map it can be a list of items where we show uh, different lists of items that we have from a database that we are calling or a google sheet that we have or it can be uh, a website that we load in a web viewer right so you can see all the components on the left these are all visible components right which are visible to the end user they, right now they are visible to you but visible components essentially mean they will be also visible to the user to see right so let me go back to screen one and then probably drag and drop some of these and show and when you drag and drop these components you can align them in the screen where you want them and each component has different properties right all these properties are available to you on the right side you can change the color of the component right we can make this let's say blue and this will turn blue right and then there is the size you can increase the size you can hide it uh, and you can also add a border depending on what type of component you are using and so on right so each components properties are always available on the right now what are some uh, different components that we have there is an image component there is a map as i mentioned there is a checkbox then there is a text input so if you're building forms there are all sorts of form fields available like date input time input then there is checkbox uh, slider where you can say if you are taking a, uh, rating from the user for your application you can always use the slider and ask the user to slide from left to right and rate or give a score for something right if that is some application that you are building and then there is canvas canvas is where it's a very interesting component canvas is where you can also let the users draw so if you have if you want to build an application where you want the user to sign right you use the canvas component right and each component uh, that is added to any screen appears like this as a tree so that you can see which is on top which is below and rearrange if you want right let's say you want to show the canvas if the rating is done then you can probably add the canvas at the top and then hide the rating once the can uh, rating has been given and then show the canvas right these are all possible i'll get to that in just a bit but these are all the visible components right there is a data viewer list where you can show a list of items let me just show you an example now to delete any of these you, you can just go here and click delete uh, you can also alternatively just go here and then delete each of the component that you are selecting so let me just select this one 
go here and delete or you can also delete from here as I mentioned then there are different ways to show data if you want to show PDF you can do PDF reader if you want to show data in a grid of images and their titles right so we added the data grid here and these are the types are available here right so you can click this and these are different ways to show the data so let's say you have image and a title uh, let's say you're displaying uh, uh, good restaurants around you right and you have a restaurant picture and the name of the restaurant you can always use this and show different uh, types or uh, different views for the data right this is data viewer grid and then then there is a data viewer list right and this is a basic list item where you can show a text and subtitle subtitle next to it these are all the formats that are available for the data viewer list right how the data comes into this is up to you you can uh, use Airtable to bring the data you can use Thunkable's inbuilt database to use the data you can also use uh, Google Sheets to pull the data or if you have an API where you want to fetch this data from you can always do that and there are a bunch of uh, tutorials around this I have made some there are quite a few other great creators that have made videos around it so don't worry about all of that but try and understand what options are available so that you can pick the right one for your idea right so this is data viewer list right then if you want to run ads then there is an ad mob banner you can add that and ads will show up but for that you will need a uh, google adsense account and uh, thunkable will also take a share it i think it's uh, available on premium yeah you have to upgrade your account to use ad mob so we'll not get into that but these are all the visible components now if there are visible components there will always be invisible components right so now let's quickly check what are some of the invisible components and to see these invisible components the only way to do it in the new drag and drop builder by new i mean this one that i'm making is by going to the blocks section right where is the block section you ask and it is right here on the top left corner of the screen right now in the block section these are all the invisible components there is web APIs, then there is a way to access the Bluetooth of the device that the user is using. Let's say you want to uh, capture or use the Bluetooth feature on the mobile. If you are building a mobile application, you can always use that. And if you, are, if you have in-app purchases feature and to be enabled, that you can add. And if you want to use sensors that are available on the device, any of these sensors if you want to use, you can always select them and add them and they will get added to the app itself and then you can use their capabilities. If you want to use the camera of the phone, if you're building an app where you want users to take a picture, you can always use the camera feature, right? Then there is push notifications. If you want to send notifications to the user, you can always send push notifications using this integration. This works with a tool called onesignal.com. So make sure you have an account on that. I'll probably make a video on how to send push notifications using OneSignal uh, and Thunkable in the near future, right? So these are some of the invisible components that are available, right? And then along with this, there are a lot of options for each of these components, right? We've added a data viewer list and these are all the things that you can do with the data viewer list. Uh, whenever a user clicks on, let's say one of the item in the list, what should happen? And if the user left swipes on the lift, what should happen? For example, in the contacts app on your phone, you might have noticed that if you swipe in some phones, if you swipe uh, to your left, there will be option to delete the contact or probably edit the contact if you swipe right right if you want features like that on your list you can always enable these and add and then also change the height and width and refresh the data from time to time right and a bunch of other features right i think thunkable by default gives you a lot of these features inbuilt so that you don't have to worry right then in control section you have different ways to navigate into multiple screens and then you can also add waiting time let's say you are saying you are bringing some heavy data from an api you can also add a wait time and show a timer to the user and if you want to play around with loops if you have a lot of data that is coming in from an api or the google sheet and you want to display it one by one you can write a loop and you can break out of loop and if you want to just open an external link you can always use this control to do that there are, these are all the options that are available as backend this is essentially the logic part of your application and design is the front end and the user interface of the application and as i mentioned this is the component tree where whatever you add here is always available in a tree format so that you know which is 
uh, on top of what element right along with this you you can always add different data sources as i mentioned there are there is google sheets uh, there's a table there is apis that you can use to fetch data and also webflow if you want to pull data from webflow and also if you want to use thunkable's inbuilt uh, table feature you can always do that so you can directly add data into thunkable app itself but remember that that will make your app heavy but uh, if your data is light i mean why not right and if you want to look at all the images that you add to your application in one place you can always come here right and if you want to import images from figma you can always do that by authenticating your figma account into thunkable right so that you can directly import everything and then there is setting settings section where you can update all the app details right if you want to publish this app to let's say android google play store or uh, app store in ios you can always add those details here the app name app description and icon and then the bundle id here and then the versions and if you are using any external uh, tools like firebase or google uh, map or AdMob for running ads or if you are using image recognizer from microsoft or if you are uploading uh, files to an external service like cloudinary all these details exist here right this is where you upload all your critical information about your app in the app settings now the last piece that i really want to talk about is how you can test your app right one way to test it is directly share a link with whoever you want the app to use and give you feedback or you can download ios and android there is a limit on how many times you can download but in free uh, plan of thunkable you can download the apps directly and then push it to the respective stores and you also have a thunkable app that is available for android and ios where you can live test the apps that you are building as and when you build you can click on this and enter the code that shows in the thunkable mobile app there is a video where i talk about this don't worry about that you can always find relevant videos for all of this so you can enter the code and test the app in real time as you build it and if you want to view the web preview of the app you can always do the web preview and see how your app looks and this these are essentially some of the features that i really wanted to cover in a thunkable 101 video where i talk about what is the user interface what are the features that are available for you to be able to build apps without worrying much about each of these components and not being able to understand them right so these are the components as i mentioned that are available and there are a lot of uh, example apps that thunkable and the community has provided i will link them in the description below that you can check out then there are sample apps and if you are on a free plan all your apps are public for anybody else to see what someone else has built but if you want your apps to be private you can always upgrade your account and uh, get a paid account and become a thunkable pro account and then keep uh, all of those private as well and uh, yes so that is thunkable 101 and i hope that will give you a simple preview of what thunkable has to offer and uh, if you found this helpful drop a like below and consider subscribing to this channel because this channel is all about building stuff without coding see you in another video peace